Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if this is your first time stopping by, I'm Karen. You're at the loft and you pick the perfect time to hit that play button. And that makes you wicked smart. Today's video is part of a collab with my sweet friend, Lisa Kennedy. But you guys probably know her as the dollar mom here on YouTube. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I am a part of a really big crafting community there. And Lisa has been one of my biggest supporters. She's always been there to answer a question or give me some advice. Anytime I message her, she always got right back to me. She's the cutest thing. And I just need to give her a big love, big shout out for asking me to do this with her. So thank you so much, Lisa. I hope I do you proud. <laughs> so with that being said, let's get right into DIY number one. Okay, for this DIY, we're gonna need some plastic Easter eggs. I got mine at the Dollar Tree, and I got this wood round, this chunky wood round ornament from the Dollar Tree. You're gonna need two of them. Actually, you're gonna need four of them if you're gonna make two of these candlesticks. Uh, you're gonna need some air dry clay, and I'm using this trim, silicone trim mold that I got from Amazon. So I tried to use my hot glue gun to melt a hole in the top and the bottom of these eggs and I it it wasn't working they were some hard plastic I even had a hard time getting a, a hole in there with my drill even so once I did I uh, snipped a couple of little notches in it and I opened up that hole a little bit bigger because I want a little bit of leeway see how it wiggles there because I learned from making the first one that if you try to line up the holes exactly, it's not going to come out straight and your egg is not going to sit straight. So that's why I made the hole a little bit bigger. So I have some play and I can glue them straight when I get them mm -hmm. onto this base. So I'm going to kind of eyeball it here in the center. And I'm going to drill a hole for one of these dowels. I think. I think these are the ones I got at Dollar Tree also. They're not very thick. I think they're the ones from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take some of my air dry clay and I'm just going to fill in that little hole where the uh, jute hanger was. And I'm going to fill this hole with some glue. And I'm going to add my dowel. And then I'm going to stack on the first egg. And then I'm going to add a wood bead in between and then add the second egg. And then I'll get them all lined up and straight and I will hot glue them all together. So in the end, I want this to look like it's been carved wood, like it's a spindle. I don't want it to be so obviously egg stacked up on this do, do you know what I'm saying I didn't want it to be obviously made out of plastic eggs I kind of wanted it to look like it could possibly have been turned um wood or for an old spindle so now I'm going to take some air dry the air dry clay and I'm going to roll it out into little worms <laughs> sausages I guess we used to call them when we were kids and I'm going to add the clay in between where the wood meets the base I mean the, the the wooden base meets the egg and then where the wooden beads meet the egg and then for the top of the egg I wanted a little bit more of um, an area to glue on the the top of the candlestick too so I took some of these round pieces from the Dollar Tree and glued them together and then drilled a hole in it and I'm, that's going to go on top of the eggs and once I get that all glued together I'm going to wrap these the air dry clay around making my seams meet in the back so that all the seams are all lined up in the back of this candlestick and while the clay is still um, bendable and 
damp. I'm going to hit it with some um, Aliens Tacky Glue and I'm going to place the air yeah, dry clay right into the glue so it takes on that shape. I'm going to kind of press it, press it in and mold it and kind of make it all like it's one piece. You'll see what I mean. See right here. And when I get it all painted up, um, you'll see that it it looks it looks like a spindle. It looks like an old wooden spindle. So now I'm going to cover up those um, the seams where the eggs meet in the middle, and I'm going to add a little detail on the wood round to kind of hide up the hide the edges of um, the wood round a little bit. And I'm going to use this trim that kind of looks like little eggs. They're like little oval shapes. And I'm going to take a bunch of those. And again, while it's still damp, I'm going to put my glue down. And I'm going to bend it around the egg and glue it into the glue. I'm pressing into the glue, sorry. And I'm going to get that all done in all the areas. All the way up in here, you can see the first one I did with three eggs. Let that dry overnight. And then I'm going to take my spray and presto, magic. They're all sprayed up. Now these would look beautiful just the way they are right now. But stay with me because this is a process, right? You got to trust the process. I want this to look like chippy white paint coming off of old dark wood. So now that I got everything all base coated white, I'm going to cover it all with antique wax so that it looks like wood. And then I'm going to go in with a pretty heavy distress on my brush and I'm going to paint over that. So I'm going to let the music play while you watch me do my thing.
I love this finish. I can't get enough. Look at how it brings all of those details in that dry clay trim. I love these so much. Now, this really isn't so much a DIY as it is kind of like a little facelift. And you may have seen lots of creators doing the flocked glass round Christmas ornaments at Christmas time. And I really wanted to do that, but I never got around to doing it. It's just so crazy at the shop at Christmas time. So I thought maybe I will flock some of these Dollar Tree styrofoam eggs. So I did learn because I was impatient and I didn't listen. So I'm going to tell you, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so you're going to, I used acrylic paint for this because I think that the chalk paint dries too fast. And I'm going to put a good heavy coat of whatever color of your choice. And you're going to really spoon on this flower. It's flour that I'm putting over top of this wet paint. Okay. And I'm not going to, I'm going to resist <laughs> the urge to tap it off and to brush it off right away. So you want to get a good, smooth, even coat of your paint on. And then you want to get a nice thick layer of the flour on it. And you want to let them B. This is where I made the mistake and I was too impatient and I brushed one off and it definitely did not have the effect that I was looking for. So what happens is the flower encapsulates this wet paint so it's not going to air dry. Okay. And the flower is going to absorb all the moisture from the paint. And that's how it's going to dry. Okay. So I just literally, after I messed up the first one and it didn't look right, I literally just had to put them aside and I didn't come back to them until the next day. I lost the footage of me actually brushing them off, but you can see how pretty the finish is on them here in the final reveal. I love this paint finish, you guys. It makes my heart literally skip a beat. Let me know what you think in the comments. And look how soft and velvety these eggs look. I cannot wait to try this technique on some Christmas ornaments this year. It's so pretty. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And let me know if you tried this technique and if you had some success with it. Okay. So here is Lisa's page. This is her YouTube page. And when you're done watching this video, I want you all to go over and jump on her video and give her a shout out. Say hi and tell her I sent you. She is so talented and she does the most amazing DIYs with Dollar Tree and Dollar Store products. And oh my goodness, if you are a scrapbooker or someone who likes to craft with paper she does the most beautiful things with scrap paper so showing you the love lisa thank you so much for today and let's get into diy number three okay if you've been following me for a minute you know i like to glue the dollar tree cutouts together to get a nice chunkier upscale piece of decor to work with so we're going to need four of these bunnies 
Okay. Now I tried this DIY last year and I glued two of them together and I liked it, but it wasn't quite chunky enough for me. So I got two more and I'm going to sand down all the loose paper that's on it. I'm not going to worry about getting every bit of the paper off because I'm really going to only be using the back side. And so this stuff isn't going to really matter. I'm, I don't have to paint over any of this. So I'm going to glue two more together. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to take the uh, two from last year. And then I'm going to glue all four of them together to get a nice chunky piece of wood. And you can see, you can see what I'm doing here while the music plays. Look at that big, chunky, bunny butt. I love it. This piece has got a little bit of weight to it. It's, it's, it's nice, nice to work with. And this MDF stuff sands so smooth and beautifully. You can literally sand down those edges and it will look like one big piece of chunky wood. All right, I'm getting out my antique wax and I am going to use very little product on my brush and I'm going to get those edges where I sanded back the paint to expose that wood look and I'm going to enhance that all around the edge and a little bit across the middle just to kind of take down the white a little bit, make it look just a little bit more warm, a little bit distressed. And then I'm going to take this base that I got at Hobby Lobby. I got it on sale in the spring. No, I don't think it was Hobby Lobby. I think it was Michael's actually. And it's just like a, just like a little wooden accent piece. But the bottom of that has got some weight to it. And I drilled a tiny hole in the top of it. Because I didn't really want to make the hole too, too big. Because I want to be able to maybe take this apart and use it in another DIY or during another season as an accent piece. So I'm just going to drill a little hole in the bottom of the bunny and match that up with the hole in the, I'm going to call it a spindle, the base, whatever. And I'm going to use a toothpick to kind of hold that 
together. And is it super sturdy? No, the toothpick would probably snap pretty easily. But it's going to be more secure than just gluing the belly of the bunny on top of this wood piece. So I'm thinking it's just going to make it just a little bit more secure for me. Uh, so it doesn't fall apart. And this base is pretty heavy, so I'm really not worried about it tipping over or being top heavy. And you'll see in the final reveal that I decided to make another one. I had a couple of bunnies left over, so I made another one. And if you can't find a piece like that wooden base that I found at Michael's, you'll see that I used two of the small little mini candlesticks that I get at Hobby Lobby, and I glued the fat ends together and glue them to a, a wood block from the Dollar Tree. And you can see here that it looks pretty similar. And that little block has a little bit of weight to it too. So these have been fine. They're not top heavy at all. I love the neutral farmhouse vibes these are giving me. What do you guys think? Let me know if you give it a try. And let's get into DIY number four. So this is another one that is more of a facelift than it is a DIY. And if you have been following me for the past year and you've watched any of my tissue paper challenge videos, I got this beautiful tissue paper in the mail uh, from one of the other creators that was part of the challenge. And I believe it was for the spring. It was a spring challenge and I did this really, I did this tray, did over this tray that I had in my stash. And it wasn't really my vibe. So I'm just gonna switch it out real quick and I'm painting the edges white because I'm gonna use this peel and stick wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. And if you know me even a little bit, you know why this is totally my jam. I absolutely love this botanical print. And I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to squeegee it out with my little Cricut tool. And that's it. This DIY is done. And here it is in the final reveal. Yes, this is totally more my style. I love this print so much and it will be in my home all year long. What do you guys think of it? Have you been able to find this print in your stores? Okay, so here we go. Let's get into DIY five and six. For this DIY, you're gonna need this free printable and I will share that link with you in my description box. I printed it out on cardstock and you're going to need one of these canvas boards from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give it two good coats, go, one coat going one direction, one coat going the other direction of this French linen chalk paint and then I'm going to mount the picture onto the canvas board with some, some of that double mount sticky tape yeah this stuff from the Dollar Tree the stuff is so sticky it worked great so I just mounted it with that it's nice and thin doesn't get bulky and I have this old chalkboard sign that I used to use for my grandkids on their first and last day of school and I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of hot glue in the corners because I want to be able to pop this off and use this chalkboard sign again and I'm just going to hang this for, you know, 
for the springtime for Easter. And it makes the cutest little farmhousey sign for spring. I just love it. These colors are so pretty. And now I'm going to take these books from the Dollar Tree, these paperback books. And I'm going to take off the covers on the front and the back. And I'm going to get them all neutralized. I'm going to rip off a couple of pages until I get down to, until I can find a blank page on the top book and the bottom book. I'm going to give them a coat of white chalk paint real quick so I don't really wrinkle that um, the top pages. I use a nice quick dry brush when I when it comes time to paint them. But first, <laughs> I forgot about this and I don't think I've seen anybody else do this with book stacks. So if you have, let me know. So there's a little medallion flower circle-y thing um, in this silicone mold that I'm going to use. And I'm also going to use a couple of the different trims and I'm going to cut off little pieces and I'm going to glue them to the tops of the binder of the book. Oh, I don't know what the, that part of the book is called. The binder, the spine, the binder. Anyways, I'm going to embellish them with some air dry clay. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to give all of them a coat of white paint and I make a little decal on my Cricut in a very pretty pale pink that says Easter's on its way. And I'm just going to use these to display um, in a cute little vignette for my kitchen table that you'll see in the final reveal. And I'm not going to glue these books together. I'm just going to stack them up and because I'm hoping that after spring and Easter is over, I might be able to peel that decal off and maybe reuse them again for another season or in another DIY or just leave them neutral, plain for a nice basic accessory to have when I'm staging stuff around my house. So I'm going to let the music play while you finish, while you watch me finish. Um, get all these embellishments on and how I get my little decal on and how I get it all put together.
I get this third decal on, get them all lined up, and that is it for this DIY. And I absolutely love how these came out. And I forgot to mention, but I think you probably saw that I sanded them back a little bit, and then I distressed the edges with a dry brush with some of that French linen on it. And I absolutely love I know the pink vinyl is really light, but it's the prettiest shade of pink. It's so pretty. And here it is in the final reveal. I know I'm teasing you with that egg and that glass close, you guys, but I promise you it's coming. Here we go with our last DIYs, seven and eight. All right, so you can find a printable of your choice online, and this is my favorite thing to do. I am printing out on regular old tissue paper. Okay, so there's a couple of tricks to this. You have to tape down every single part of the tissue paper. There cannot be any loose pieces hanging and you need to make sure that the dull side of the paper is up and you need to know which side, you need to know how your printer prints, okay? My printer flips around so I'm making sure that the side I want on the top, I lay it face down and I have success, it comes out face up. So I'm not going to try and take this off completely with the tape. I just removed that side because I need every little bit of the edge of that end of this image. And I'm going to use the water method and I'm going to go around my image getting as close as I can but not too close that the water runs into the ink. And I did let this dry for a good 20 minutes before I did this. And I'm just going to let the music play while you watch because it's it's very tedious and once I get it separated I go back again and I get even closer to that image which kind of made my ends curl up a little bit so I get out my little mini press and some parchment paper and I get the tissue paper nice and flat before I try and decoupage it down onto the surface. get these wood rounds at Hobby Lobby on clearance uh, and believe it's spring clearance. I think they come out at spring so when they go on sale at the end of the season I buy them up because I use them to make signs for the shop at Christmas time and sometimes I make them reversible you know and I use the back or sometimes I just use the back as a background for a shelf sitter or a mantelpiece. So here I am taking a piece of chalk and I'm just kind of outlining the image very faintly because I'm going to give it a coat of Mod Podge 
and I'm going to let that dry. And I don't want to Mod Podge the whole surface because I don't want that sheen to show on the whole surface. And actually at the end of spring, I want to hopefully try and maybe reactivate this glue and maybe wash this off so I can use it for a sign for Christmas this year. So if you've been watching me for a minute, you know I have a love-hate thing with the Mod Podge. So my favorite way is to let it dry and then to do the iron on method. Okay, so I'm going to go in with a little angled brush with very little white chalk paint on my brush. And I'm just tapping the edges of that tissue paper just to help kind of blend it in a little bit more so that you can't really see the edges of this image. The background of this particular image had a little bit of a tint to it, so it wasn't completely white. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have to do this step. And then another trick I use to doing these tissue paper transfers. I mean, the possibilities are endless with this, you guys. You can find any image, turn it into your own little transfer. I've done this on furniture. It's so pretty. Um, I'll take a dry brush. I'm going to take a dry brush of the white right here, right here. I'm going to take my chippy brush with very little paint on it. And I'm just going to dry brush over the image, being very careful not to reactivate that ink because I don't want to start smudging the black ink all over this project. And so I'm just very little paint, doing it very lightly, just to kind of give it a more worn in look like it's always been there. And I'm going to use this as a tray on my kitchen table. And you'll see in the very final video of the whole vignette and how I get all the pieces, you know, that a lot of the pieces, I should say, that we made today put together. It, it, comes, it comes out really pretty. So stay tuned to the end. Make sure you stay to the end and watch that whole little video of how I put this little vignette together in my kitchen. Let me know what you guys think of this method and if you've tried it or if you think you might want to give it a try. And here it is, you guys. I'm making you wait to the very end for this little Dollar Tree Easter egg makeover. So I'm going to take some tissue paper and I'm going to cut it into these petal shaped pieces which make it so much easier when you're decoupaging onto a round surface. I also do this when I do my ornaments at Christmas time. So you know the drill. You slap on the decoupage. I mean, you slap on the Mod Podge. You lay your piece down. I'm going to work from the middle out using very light pressure with my brush to smooth it out because I don't want to rip the tissue paper. And I'm going to keep doing that until the whole egg is covered. Once it's covered, I am going to let that dry. And then I'm going to go give it a coat of that French linen chalk paint. Once I got a coat of that chalk paint on, I realized I wanted to have a little more texture, so I'm going to add some baking soda to some of that chalk paint, and I'm going to apply it to the egg using kind of like a pouncing, stippling kind of motion. 
to create a little bit more texture on this egg. All right, while that's drying, I got these super cute little silicone molds from Amazon and I will put the link to them in the description box and they make the most beautiful, perfect size flowers for this project. I love them, especially this little flower. Oh my gosh, I love it just the way it is, but I can imagine a bunch of those all clustered together to make like a hydrangea. So, so pretty. So I am going to, you know, do the same thing. You've seen me work with this. I'm going to roll it out. I'm going to get some powder, powder my mold, push the clay in there, pop them out, and do that a couple of times until I get enough flowers to cover up this egg. And I'm just going to let you watch this whole process because it's, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to me. I... It's like when I do floral arrangements, you know, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. I just kind of put the pieces together until my eyes are happy. I forgot to tell you that I wanted to make this stand up and not lay down. So I have this old jar candle cover. It's wood, so I didn't throw it away. And I want to get that foam backing off. And I'm heating up the back side of it because I don't want to melt the foam piece. I just want to heat up the glue so that it loosens up enough that I can peel that off. And I'm going to use that as the base to this egg. And I'm just going to let you keep watching as I just kind of move these pieces around here or there and until I get them where I like them. I let this dry overnight and this egg was done. And you can see it all come together here in this little vignette in the final reveal.
absolutely love how all of these DIYs came together in this little vignette. If this doesn't scream spring, I don't know what does. I want to know what you guys think, so let me hear it in the comments. And as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate you being here. Please go show my girl Lisa some big love today. Go watch her videos, subscribe to her channels, so you don't miss any more of her content she is amazing thank you lisa thank you so much for today if you guys like what you saw and found value in these diys then you know what to do to show me the love by hitting all those youtube buttons thanks for watching everybody i'll see you in the next one